Hello, yummy apple juice. This is your final warning. Today, we're going to be speaking about rotating to your core coins. What do I mean by it? We're going to explain. But first, most importantly, you are my baby cake. I love you all. I treat you like my children. We are all friends, baby doll baby cakes. I know your back is straight. I know your chair is squeaky. I know you don't wear brown leather shoes for a non-formal event on a Saturday morning. We're completely aware of the obvious. And your elbows are pretty pointy too. 99% of crypto failed to become a religion. Now, I am completely aware. I say this. It doesn't hit most people. 99% of crypto will fail to become a religion. Every single coin out there. I'm not going to bother naming names because people get triggered. I understand it's very hard to tell you what you're in is a flash in the pan, a short-term thing. So I'm going to try a different strategy to help you understand what I do, how I conquer this feeling. Because, yeah, man, you want to hold the thousand X. You think I don't? Everyone does. But you need a strategy of how you interpret the information, okay? Most coins are just a car crash, all right? When you're driving along the motorway and you see the sirens, the red and the blue from the ambulance, and there's been a car crash, everyone slows down to look. And you you can't help but look. I've been on the phone when I'm driving, and I'm like, man, these freaking slow drivers, get over it. Man, drive past. And guess what? I'll drive past, and even I'll have a quick look. <laughs> so we, it happens. But then after you pass the accident, it's over. You keep driving. You've lost all your attention for it. You just focus on the new thing like it never happened. That's most crypto coins. They come in, grab everyone's attention. They can't help but look because the coins are going up. There's a green candle. But once you pass, that's it. Now, a religion is what you want to join. <laughs> a religion is what you want to find. And you don't really know because they're always forming. you got to get in early, but you look for signs, okay? So on average, 99% of coins are just one season pump and dumps. They are one season. Now, I'm very aware, and I'm going to let you know, the season can last much longer than you think, right? Now, for example, did you know that Luna actually collapsed in May of 2021? However, they did some dodgy printing and stuff to prop up the coin again. They paid the market makers. They gave them a sweet deal for jump trading to pump up Luna and restore the UST peg. They helped some sort of financial movement around there. They did some dodgy stuff. So they bought time in the Ponzi again. So even if you knew that Luna was a Ponzi back then, it, it did technically go to zero in May, but they propped it up one more time. And then it collapsed again in May of 2022. So they delayed it by one year. Now it still went to zero, but you know I want to show you. Have a look at this, friends. I have Luna for you, friends. So this is such a fascinating example. Have a look at this. Even though you knew Luna was not a religion and a car crash, it still dropped. It actually went to zero here in May when China dumped their Bitcoin and China scammed everyone in crypto and banned it, the scum government there. So that's when Luna went to zero here. However, it then rallied <laughs> 24x, 2,400%. Then I went to zero. <laughs> so I'm telling you, keep keep an open mind, baby dolls. Keep an open mind and keep an open heart. That is my message for you. I was put on this earth to tell you about this. Okay, this is the game. This is my field. This is what I love doing. <laughs> I love finding examples of where everything gets thrown out the window. Okay, so one season pump and dumps. But like I said, the season can last much longer than you think. Very hard, but it is what it is. All right, you're just going to have to accept it. So what's coming next? In the next six months, right, we're going to read this together. Bitcoin and Ethereum might take us to new heights. So I hope they do. I hope it keeps continuing. The cycle seems to be playing along as usual, right? Don't want to jinx anything. But what do you do if that happens? Well, you got to rotate your profits to your core and don't drink the Kool-Aid. So what does that actually mean, friends? So remember, in, your core can be any of these coins. I'll just get them out again. 
right? Your core, some people have a core of Bitcoin, Ethereum, right? Let's go back to just the Bitcoin chart, right? So this is the risk curve, going along the risk curve here, okay? You can have anything you like. Most commonly, people have Bitcoin and Ethereum. They feel safer in those, right? Then you move to the larger caps and the mid caps and the smaller caps. They have different risk risk parameters about them, right? And if you if you do, if you do the research yourself, you lower the risk, okay? That's one of the amazing parts about it. University people and people who don't know how to invest and make money, they will say risk is just the price going up and down, right? Like, oh, risk, 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 risk. That's what they think, but that's actually wrong. That's just they need a number to calculate so they can do the formulas and teach kids in school. This is what I learned about in uni, right? But if you listen to Warren Buffett, he says, no, real risk is just the stuff you don't know about it, which is true when you think about it, right? So even though a coin goes up, down, 90%, 99% up and down, if you understand its fundamentals and it's worth heaps, that's not risk to you, right? You actually have no risk in it, okay? So this is something to think about, okay? This is why most people actually fail at crypto because they'll see the price is going down and I think, oh, the risk was higher than I thought. No, it wasn't. The, the volatility, the price deviates, okay? Now, you can start with Bitcoin, Ethereum, but look, if we just use Bitcoin as an example or Ethereum, right? Because everybody can understand that. If you want to go advanced, you'll go to like even your cores, right? You might have lottery tickets that make money. You rotate into Chainlink and Hex up until their targets. But we can just start with with Ethereum. So let's say you were in a lottery. Now, I don't want to pick one lottery coin because they're going to change. They may go to zero. But let's just for this example say that you were in Chainlink, right? You were in Chainlink and... You were in, it's lottery. I'm going to get the real link ETH chart. Use Binance for the best data. All right. So let's say Chainlink was a coin that you really didn't believe in. You go, well, and I know most people are going to buckle when this happens, right? So this is the log chart. But if you put linear, you can see linear makes things look really nice when they round out, right? So let's say you just got in around here. And let's say you only thought, you thought Chainlink was a one season pump and dump. So let's get the logo here because I just realized there needs to be some more friendship. Here we go. Okay, so here we go. So if you bought Chainlink here, let's say your core, let's say Ethereum was 90% of your core. Okay, so Ethereum, or you were just an Ethereum maxi in this example. Right? And you said, hey, man, I found I found it, price of Ethereum, let's say it's around 1800 And you go, hey, I found $1,800 in my cash savings, okay? And you ask me, hey, what do I do? And I say, well, you could buy, right, one Ethereum with it, right? 1800 you could buy one ETH, okay? But then you say to me, nah, I don't really want to buy one ETH. I, I want to put it in lottery because I have enough Ethereum. That's what you might say to me. And I say, okay, well, you do have the option to, let's say you like chaining. You say, okay, well, you can deploy 1800, so which is one ETH value into Link. Okay, so that, that's an option. This is what you're doing. Okay, so when you're buying chain Link, you are buying it at this pricey, even if you don't purchase it with chain Link, uh, with Ethereum. Okay, even though you're buying it with US dollars. Okay, it doesn't matter. This is just a ratio to show you if prices go up or down. That's it. It doesn't actually tell you, oh, I bought here or whatever. Only you know. You go, okay, I bought Chainlink exactly in this box. I put eighteen hundred dollars in. So I put you bought one ETH value. So this one bought one ETH value into Link. Okay, but also it's the same thing. Bought eighteen hundred dollars worth of Link. So if you actually want to calculate it, okay. You sit here and you go, all right, well, I only believe in this for one season. And let's just say for some reason, right, chaining just goes up to here. And you're like, oh, my God, it's up here. And you say, you know what? I don't believe in this. I'm too happy. I just want to get out. And that's okay. Okay. So you just measure it. So if Chainlink rallies along this yellow line, that means Chainlink is beating Ethereum. Okay. So both Chainlink and Ethereum are moving. But at this point, what happens is if you are selling up in this zone, okay, let's just get this box here. If you are selling up in this zone and you bought down in this zone, right, you can just get the measuring tool and go, okay, let's just go to the middle of this box plus 240%. So that's a 3.4x. So effectively what happened is your one your one ETH turned into 3.4 ETH. Okay, that's what happened. 
okay, at this point. So it, it, you haven't sold it yet, but you're looking at it and you're going, okay, hey, man, that one Ethereum, I put in one ETH value. I can now get 3.4 ETH. So I made the right move of playing this lottery and you're happy. And this is where you're now at a fork and path. And you might say, okay, I like 3.4 Ethereum and I want to take it all out and rotate back. So what you've done is at this point, you will rotate your, your chain link key into ETH. So now you just add back into your core. Okay. So now your Ethereum, it was 90% of your core. Now it's going to be like 92%. Doesn't even matter what the real number is, but you're just, you're adding Ethereum back in. So what you've done is you've had your ETH here. Okay. And then you have your little lottery tickets everywhere, right? And we're going to draw more. There a lot of them are poopies. We're going to have to draw logos just so we understand. There is poopies here. Here we go. So these are your poopy lottery tickets. And you go, hey, this is Chainlink. Let's get the Chainlink logo. One of them was like, wow, this thing worked. And it won for me. What you'll do is you're going to get that, use that to put it back in your Ethereum bucket. And that's what ultimately is your strategy, your goal for this whole cycle. Because we don't know how many seasons they're going to be. We don't know what coins are going to move. But if you're just lucky enough, you know, because we are even lucky and if this thing even works, if we're lucky enough to get more value of our core that we want, we rotate it back in. And then you might say, okay, but what happens when Ethereum hits a target? Well, we're going to have to talk about something else at that point. That's years away. You know, <laughs> That's where you might have to say, hey, I want buy a property. I want to take it out into US dollars. Okay, that's a completely different game. But for now, because it's so early in the cycle, we can think about things this way. And at the end of the day, you know, really, you have one big mega goal. That's why, friends, if you look at the total total crypto market cap, I'm going to look at total. The total crypto market cap is like 1.15 trillion, whatever it is, okay? You put on a log chart, okay? Always put on a log chart. We put on a monthly, and you can see the target I have is 10 trillion up here. So... This is my target. So I believe we have a lot of wiggle room. So you can make a lot of mistakes in here. So remember, it, until it gets to that point, I believe, let's say you're in Chainlink or any other coin or Hex, and you're like, hey, man, uh, I want to rotate back into Ethereum, but I missed the top. And, and now we're down after two months. Don't panic because we are nowhere near the big target. Okay. So effectively, what I'm saying is, Right, when you translate all my words into the charts, it means if the total crypto market cap goes to this zone, we will probably see what I would call the end game. Okay, the end game, end game, which is euphoria, blow off, mania, right? And then you also see, okay, so that's on one end. That's this is the end game, right? And you'll also see friends, um, the media, you'll see the traps form. So traps will be everyone saying the bull, the bull market is just starting. That's one trap. They'll also say adoption is finally coming in. More countries do BTC currency. You'll also have um, Bitcoin spot ETF. Okay. You might even have Maybe Peter Schiff <laughs> gets bullish. I'm just telling you, you got to think outside the box, okay? As I'm thinking outside the box, friends, this is where the traps form. So I can't predict the future exactly, but I'm just letting you know. Once these things start popping up, once the traps start appearing, and I'm like, oh my God, people are telling me the bull's just getting started, and there's a Bitcoin spot ETF, and all these things are happening when I hear that, I will be making videos that also, unfortunately, are going to make me lose subscribers and followers, but that's okay because I'm speaking the truth. I will be saying, hey, even though, so, you know, when I did this example, right? When I did this example, okay, you oh, you had the luxury of buying a th chain link down here, but I'm letting you know in the future, right? Let's say we're further down a curve. There's going to be people who buy further along. Maybe, maybe this happens, okay? Maybe chain link goes to the top and then it comes back down, right? And you and it's down here. Okay. Now you might think, oh, that's simple. No, no, no. Because all people are going to be thinking is, damn, it's down 36%, right? So maybe somebody had 30 Ethereum at the top up here 
and now they're down to 20. And they're going to go, man, I don't want to sell because freaking hell, I had 30 Ethereum just a month and a half ago. Now it's down to 20, right? In this lottery ticket, in my coins. But I'm here to protect you, right? And as I said, if I'm seeing the end game stuff, the traps, okay, the, the signs of the exuberance, then that's when I'll be adamantly saying, hey, you don't have the luxury of believing in a higher leg in the next 12 months. It's possible, but more than likely, it's going to be lower. There's going to be less retailers. People are going to panic more again and the cycle will repeat. Now, very, it's very possible we don't even get signs of this euphoria and we get trapped anyway. That's very possible. But I want you to know, I'm trying to teach you, friends. I'm trying to teach you, right? How come I'm mega giga bullish down here when all the news is bad? People always want to know. They say, they say, my friend saw me, please. I come to you, sir, with a with sprinkled donut. First, I'll eat the donut. It's nice. Lots of sugar. And I'll say, hey, you want to know why do I get so convicted when the world is crumbling? And that's because you can always climb the world of worry and be optimistic to conquer it. However, in the end game, Euphoria friends, there are no more walls to climb. You have finally got to the top and there are end signs here. There are Peter, Sch Peter Schiff's now bullish. You climbed so many walls of worry that there's no one left, nothing left to worry about. There's nobody left to conquer. And what this actually means is it means Every single person in the globe, in the sphere, in the market, who was thinking of buying into crypto, once you've finally climbed all those walls at 10 trillion market cap, there's nobody else left to buy. And that's precisely how a bull market ends. The bull market ends when you run out of buyers, okay? My final message to you, friends, the climax, okay? I'm, like I said, a bull market does not end when a big seller comes in. No. The bull market ends when you finally run out of buyers. But you know what will never run out? That's right. Our friendship.